When asked to recall Father Nelson Baker, many describe a saintly man who is a protector of people and a strong advocate for the rights of the disadvantaged. Others refer to him as a visionary and a shrewd businessman who is able to turn even the most desperate of situations around. All remember him as a spiritual leader of incredible faith with a steadfast devotion to the Blessed Mother as Our Lady of Victory. Born in Buffalo, New York in 1842, Nelson Baker experienced a great deal during his long life. He was the son of a Catholic mother and a Lutheran father, raised in a thriving new city full of ethnic and religious divisions. He was part of the 74th Regiment of the New York State Militia in the Civil War, and a successful co-owner of a prosperous feed and grain business. Nelson was also a deeply devout Catholic who longed for meaning in his life. At the age of 27, he entered the seminary for priesthood and was ordained at the age of 34. Father Baker's life as a priest began at a parish in Limestone Hill, now Lackawanna, New York. The large property consisted of St. Patrick's Church, St. Joseph's Orphanage, and St. John's Protectory, which were all in deep financial difficulty. Through innovative fundraising, both locally and nationally, Father Baker was able to save all the institutions. The uh, federal post office recognizes Father Baker as the founder of uh, mail order solicitation. Uh, he would send uh, letters to people all over the country. Uh, he asked postmasters to put letters in the mailboxes of people who were Irish, had Irish last names, uh, thinking that they would be Catholic. Through his 60 years as a priest, he became known as Padre of the Poor for his charitable work. In addition to the orphanage, school, and infant home, Father Baker also constructed a maternity hospital for unwed mothers. Father Baker was a really multifaceted person. Every need he could find, whether it was for black Catholics, whether it was for orphans, whether it was for unwed mothers, or whatever it happened to be, uh, he would uh, say, this is the work of the church. Uh, the church has to do this. And despite the opposition that he got from governments many times for trying to do that, he said, no way. This is our work. It's our mission. It's what the church is all about. In order to save costs on everyday operation, Father Baker was inspired to drill for gas on the grounds of his city of charity. Many failed attempts led his endeavors to be dubbed Baker's Folly, as time and time again, no gas was found on the properties. In 1891, a natural gas well was discovered on the land of Our Lady of Victory homes. The well provided enough gas to offset heating costs, and local folklore described the discovery as a miracle. At the age of 79, Father Baker began to build a beautiful basilica, later designated a national shrine in the name of his beloved Our Lady of Victory, as gratitude for her many years of patronage to his prayers. This massive undertaking involved the best sculptors, artisans, painters, and architects of the time, and under the careful direction and constant valor of Father Baker, it was built in just five years and paid for by contributions. He found ways to ask people for funds uh, in a way that he thought they would be able to help him, but wouldn't put a, a burden on people. And so he asked them to uh, send change to help build the, the uh, basilica. During the Great Depression, Father Baker's City of Charity provided bread, soup, clothing, medicine, and even money to those who lined up at the doors each day. Between 1930 and 1933 alone, more than 450,000 meals were served. Father Baker also set up boarding homes for families and opened available beds in his institutions for those in need of shelter. Father Baker died on July 29, 1936, at the age of 92, with no money in the bank, indebted to no one, and no one indebted to me, as stated in his last will and testament. A reported half million mourners processed down Ridge Road for Father Baker's funeral. 
As they walk, the panoramic view of this man's many achievements, the boy's home he managed, the hospital he cared for, and the shrine that he built surround the procession in an embrace of recognition to honor this saintly man of charity. To this day, Father Baker's institutions continue to help the less fortunate. He was able to set into place, whether he knew it or not, uh, a program to care for the poor that was going to last 100 years after him, 200 years after him, maybe 300 or 400 years. Yeah? Uh, and yet he would simply say, listen, you know, uh, this is what God inspired me to do. Uh, he let me do it. Uh, I'm only the humble instrument of God's grace and God's work, and uh, uh, Our Lady of Victory will see it through to completion. Through the years, miracles have been attributed to Father Baker. Many have prayed and believed that through his intercession to the Blessed Mother, people have been healed of sicknesses and crippling terminal illnesses. In the summer of 1998, the Congregation for the Causes of Saints in Rome recommended that Father Baker's body be transferred from nearby Holy Cross Cemetery into the Basilica itself. The casket of Father Baker was placed within the Grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes. Today, hundreds of people visit weekly to pray for and offer thanks to the saintly founder of Our Lady of Victory Institutions and pray for his canonization into sainthood. In 2011, Pope Benedict XVI approved the document on Nelson Baker's heroic virtue and declared Father Baker venerable. The life of Monsignor Nelson H. Baker is currently under review at the Vatican for canonization. Lord, you gave us your servant, Nelson Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage to those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.